Welcome IB Economics students back to this video lecture. In this video, we're going to be going over a very, very, very important concepts, which is total revenue, average revenue, and marginal revenue, their calculations, as well as what they look like when they are graphed. So uh, jumping right into it, what are the calculations like? So total revenue equals price multiplied by quantity. Now that makes a lot of sense. Total revenue basically means the total amount of money a firm is taking in before uh, factoring all the expenses, which is the price of a good multiplied by how many of the good it is sold. Therefore, the total revenue of any good is calculated by the price multiplied by the quantity sold. Now this makes a lot of sense. Now average revenue, how do we calculate average revenue? Average revenue is calculated by total revenue divided by the quantity okay total revenue is uh, average revenue is calculated by the total revenue divided by the quantity sold now as we have learned in the, in the last formula total revenue is price multiplied by quantity therefore average revenue ever revenue will be price multiplied by quantity divided by the quantity now looking at this formula if you know basic algebra you would know that uh, if, if um, you could you could basically get rid of um Q because um it's both divided by and dividing um uh, 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 Q. Therefore, total av or, or average revenue equals to P. Okay, P equals average revenue. That's um if you look if you know basic algebra you'll be able to deduce that. The next thing and, and, and we'll be looking at this video is marginal revenue. So marginal revenue equals uh, the change in uh, total revenue divided by the change in quantity. So that's how we calculate uh, the marginal revenue. It's the change in total uh, revenue divided by the change in quantity. So this is the calculations for our, 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 our three uh, formulas and three concepts in this video. So the first thing, let's, let's, let's look at two, there's two scenarios we have to look at. The first scenario is perfect co competition, and the second one is imperfect competition. So perfect uh, competition. Within perfect competition, there's a few criteria we have to meet. The first criteria is that there are infinite amounts of firms. The goods they produce are homogenous. That means they produce the same exact good, as well as having um perfect information. Okay, so within a perfect competition, let's let's insert a table. Uh, let's say a five by six. Here you go. So under this five by six, we're gonna have a price. We're going to have quantity, we're going to have uh, total revenue, we're going to have marginal revenue, and we're going to have average revenue. So the price for this good, because it is in a perfect competition setting, the price is constant. Okay, And the quantity is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now how to calculate the total revenue? And looking at this this uh, this formula right here, the total revenue will be a P multiplied by Q, which is 1, which is 2, which is 3, which is 4, which is 5. Right, the marginal revenue is the change in total revenue. So it's change in total revenue is one divided by the change in quantity. The change in quantity is also one, so it is one. There we go. And the average revenue, of course, is equal to price, and the price is all one. Therefore, the average revenue is one. Okay. So this is the scenario in which there is a perfectly competitive market. Okay. So this scenario occurs when there is a perfectly competitive market. What does that mean? What does a perfectly competitive market mean? That means the the uh, the firms are price takers. That means there's a fixed price. Okay. Now, if we graph the perfectly competitive uh uh a uh, uh, situation on 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 a graph curve, what 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 would it look like? Okay. What would it look like in graphic form if we actually graph this out? So the first things first, obviously, uh, we have our we 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 we're gonna have two curves. Okay, let's make this a little bit thicker. All right, so in, 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 in the, in the y-axis for this one, we're going to have price and revenue. Um, right. And in the x-axis, we're going to have quantity like it is always, like like always. Uh, for, for, for graph 2, we also want the same thing. For this, we have quantity. Uh, and for, for the graph 2, we're just going to have revenue. Revenue is good enough for graph 2. So now that we have these things, what, what, what does this look like? So what does the AR curve, which equals, which is also equal to the uh, D, which is demand, which is also equal to the AR. So it looks like this. Okay. It is a completely horizontal line. Now, what does total revenue look like? Total revenue looks like uh, 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 a marginally increasing line. So, so this is um, the, the TRAR and MR under a perfectly competitive scenario. So this is uh, AR which equals to D, which equals to MR. 
Okay, within a perfectly competitive environment, the the graphs looks like this. Under uh the and the total revenue looks like this. Okay, so this makes a lot of sense because um because uh, the firms are price takers, which means they are unable to set the price at which a good is sold at when they are a price taker. Therefore, the graphs look like this. Okay, which makes a lot of sense. All right, now looks like uh let's look like a more uh realistic scenario. A more realistic scenario would encompass a situation at which firms are actually price setters. Okay, so this is a uh, in perfect competition. Okay, right? this is a setting in which there is imperfect competition. What is a setting where there's imperfect competition? Let's make a new graph, uh, a five by ten graph. Okay, let's insert uh a table. It's five by Five by ten. Here you go. Let's make it a little bit smaller, maybe a little thicker right here. Okay. So the same thing, same. We have um the price, we have the quantity, we have total revenue, we have marginal revenue, and we have average revenue. Okay. Let's say the price increase decreases by um uh, uh, increments of one. So it starts off by ten to nine to eight, uh to seven to six, to five to five to to five to four to three to um what did I miss? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, uh, 5, 4, 3, 2, and let's add another one to uh, 1. And 1. Okay. Now, according to the law of demand, as prices increase, the demand uh, as prices increase, the demand decreases. As demand uh, as a demand as as price decrease, demand increases. So, at a very high price of ten, firms are only able to charge one. At a low higher price of nine, uh, we have uh, consumers could buy two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, and lastly, 10. Therefore, at lower prices, consumers demand more. Therefore, the quantity supplied is more. At, at higher prices, uh, this demand is lower. Therefore, quantity is lower. Now, total revenue. How do we calculate total revenue? According to this formula right here, total re re revenue is just price multiplied by quantity. That will, which will give us 10, will give us 18, will give us uh, 18, uh, will give us 24, will give us 28, will give us 30, will give us 30 again, will give us 28, will give us 24, will give us 18, will give us 10, okay? So we can see the total revenue increases at to the maximum point of 30 and it decreases again back to 10. That's the total revenue. And total revenue is, of course, uh, calculated by multiplying price with quantity. Now, now, marginal revenue. Marginal revenue is calculated by the change in uh, total revenue divided by the change in quantity. Now, it's very convenient for us that the change in quantity is one increment, okay? It increases by one. So what we have to do is just um, the, uh, um, subtract it uh, and then and, 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 and divide by one. But divided by one, it's basically the same thing. So there's no need for divide by one. So we just calculated a change in total revenue. So the change in total revenue is 10, it's eight, it's six, it's four, it's two, it's zero. Now, very interesting for total, for marginal revenue, what you could do is go into negative territory. Okay, so you go into negative two, you go into negative four, negative six, and negative eight. Okay, so marginal revenue can be negative. You have to remember, marginal revenue can indeed be negative. All right, for average rev revenue, average revenue is, of course, equal to price. So um, the price is 10, 9, 8, um, 7, 6, 5, 4, um, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Okay, so that's the average revenue. Now, now that we have uh, the calculations of... Uh, the TR, the total revenue, the average revenue, and the marginal revenue of variables in an imperfect competition scenario, what does it look like when it is graphed, okay? So the first thing is here. So let's graph our AR, which is demand curve. Now that increase, that decreases like this, okay? So that is our AR curve, which equals to demand. So let's put that right here. This is our AR curve, which equals demand. So um, this is what it looks like, as you can see from the calculations, the AAR curve, which is just decreasing from 10 all the way to 1, according to how the price decreases from 10 to 1. Okay. Now, the next thing to do is the marginal revenue curve. Okay. The marginal revenue curve also decreases from 10, but it goes down all the way to negative 8. So this, what you want to do is draw um, a point that starts exactly at the same point as average revenue does. However, it decreases at a double the speed at which, uh, double, double the slope at which AR curve decreases. So this is the MR curve, okay? So, so the marginal revenue curve decreases at the twice the steepness at the AR curve decreases. And then uh, it, it decreases at twice the steepness. And then, um, yeah. And, 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 and it starts off at the same exact point as um, 
as 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 the marginal revenue does. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Now, it is now the next thing you want to do is draw a, a line between the point at which marginal revenue goes to negative, and then now we have the total revenue. Okay, what is the total revenue? If we look at this curve right here, total revenue reaches maximum when it is dirty, right? Total revenue is dirty when marginal revenue is zero. Okay, so this is uh this is very uh, uh this is a um a universal uh uh a uh, factor common across every single one of, of 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 the curves. So when total revenue is maximum, when total revenue is maximum, like right here, marginal revenue is zero. Therefore, the total revenue curve looks just a little like this. It increases until the point at which marginal revenue pushes zero. And then it decreases. Okay, so this is what the total revenue curve looks like. It it increases until the point at which it reaches uh the point at which marginal revenue reaches zero, and it, it decreases. It ha it reaches diminishing marginal returns or this economies of scale. So this is total revenue. Okay, so with these uh um total revenue, we have we have, we have total revenue, we have marginal revenue, we have average revenue. With these graphed, we are uh, finally prepared to go into the next syllabus, which is theory of the firm, now which is really really complicated. So you really want to make sure you really really want to make sure that you understand these things. You want to make sure you understand average revenue. You want to make sure you understand marginal revenue and total revenue, the calculations behind them, as well as how to graph each of the respective curves. Um, and uh, now that you have the calculations, so I hope this video help is helpful, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.